of the Empire State Building. C100. New York. Our bestie, <laughs> multi-platinum recording artist. Let's not forget that. Also plugged Speckle. up with everybody in the industry. <laughs> like, you are Mr. Popular. We're oh. so happy that you came by again to hang out with us, Matt. Thanks, up, guys. Thanks hey, for having Max. me back. You and, on, you and our Max are like, Fuzzy yeah. besties today. We didn't just even plan to be. it. It's supposed to be. to happen this way. You oh, know what I mean? It just I'm home. I love it. It just feels right. Here. I think he needs to be your stunt double at this point. <laughs> Whenever <laughs> you're like on a lineup for anything, he's like, I could step in for him. Yes. I'm, down. I'm down. The thing is, though, I cannot hit those high notes, bro. I, I, I can't do it. If I man, ever I'm do trying. Jingle Ball, I want you to come out instead of me. You down? Just be like, oh, <laughs> let's make yay. that happen. Let's make that happen. The rotating stage. <laughs> yeah, we're going to make it happen, dude. Yes. Da, 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 da. But no, you are nonstop. Pedal to the metal, keeping Always. at it. Congratulations, Thanks, new music, yeah, yes. big collab as yeah. well. Um, just how are you feeling right now? Amazing, yeah. I haven't put out a new. My last album was called Color Vision, 2020, mm-hmm. and this new one, Love and Stereo. Four years later, it's it's wild. Time flies, but I'm so grateful and feeling grounded and excited that people get to hear it. Well, what are, what are these stories this time around? Because it's it's a constant evolution. You're challenging yourself. You're building new bridges to connect the world through your sound. Dude. Yes, sir. I mean, wow. it's just been no. It's really been one of those things to watch you as a global star. You know, Man, really connect. Thank you. So so where are these stories coming from in your heart this time around? They're always, you know, I have a new. As you guys know, I have. A a new muse in my life since the last album my daughter Edie yep. who's amazing she's three and my beautiful wife who's in the room who doesn't want to jump on the mic but I love her maybe you'll hear a British accent um, this so, guy is his <laughs> wife's biggest like I'm cheerleader I'm such a fan she, she, I basically like, wrote a whole album yeah. about her you know so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah that's that's it that's a huge part of it and I think uh, the longer I do this the more I just am a little more accepting and um, un- unapologetically telling the stories in the yeah. way like this new song stupid in love it it's there's just something uh, about it that is is very me there's something very warm and and sort of it just is what it is the song yeah. is what it is and i think maybe 4 years ago even i might have been a little less ready to put out a song like this cuz cuz i want to make sure that it's like the coolest song or whatever yeah. but but this is just so me and how i feel and 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 we had a stupid in love story you know i got engaged to Emily in 4 months yeah. i think all of our family yeah. was like you guys sure and we just knew, so it's been beautiful to just tell these stories in the most vulnerable way more and more as I go on. Yeah. I want to talk about how Max even hit you are a global star at this point. I mean, doing festivals around the world, working in Korea, working with the BTS team. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. How was that? Because that is... Oh, uh, it's, it's such an honor. I mean, the they've changed my life. Sugar changed my life. Yeah. Jungkook changed my life. The whole group and the team really have. And and it was amazing not only to, to work with Suga for his record and, and for Blueberry Eyes, but I was just telling this story. I was at my apartment. I grew up, and there's a song I co-wrote for them yet to come that they asked me to work on. And I sang the demo in my apartment right here, here in New York. Kitchen, that's, where, that's where I finished. I got off the plane. I came to the apartment. And we hooked up the mic, and that was what they ended up choosing, that song that amazing. I co-wrote for them. Um, and so it always stems back from here in New York, you know, and then it's amazing. Just it's an honor to have the music travel and Korea has changed my life and BTS has changed my to, life. To be a hometown boy, we've talked about this in several conversations together, man. You you hold this city with such high esteem. It's tatted on the body. It's, <laughs> it's who you are. And yes. to have that come through the music and to have the world globally know and connect you to such an amazing space by being who you are. What does that mean for you to create from that vantage point? It's uh, so special. I feel really seen. I feel, yeah. and, and I hope everybody can get to a place where they feel the most seen and vulnerable, and that's what I want my music to do. And and it's been amazing, again, speaking of Korea specifically, it's just some of the songs that maybe didn't get the most love in other places yeah. really got the most love there and it, and those were some of my favorite songs there's a song called Acid Dreams that I yeah. did on my last album that was just like really huge in Korea and, and, and it was just really cool that some of these songs another one called Checklist with Chromio it's just some of my favorite songs that maybe didn't get as much shine here in the US or yep. something it's so special that people connected with those songs in other places and it just gives you more excitement to say like every song is meant for a, a different place as long as it comes from that authentic place like who knows where it's going to be responded to yeah. so um, yeah I, I love that it's and, awesome and writing from that space and creating from that space and being so true to who you are and doing that that just goes to show um, the power of your words and, and exactly like you said not knowing where it's going to land and why it's going to land but it does land yes and it touches someone somewhere and that's a special gift that you've not only been given but you give to us thank Thanks. you brother I appreciate you mean thank it. you very I mean much. and we also love seeing how connected you are with 
everyone watching you on socials. Oh, you yeah. You pop out. You're always <laughs> on it, on yeah. TikTok, on IG. Yeah, yeah. Asking people's input. Yeah. And that's not as easy as it looks. Thank you for acknowledging that. I really appreciate that. Yeah, especially recently, I've been posting like twice a day. I have an incredible social media director. Her name's Ella. Shout out Ella. Yo, love you. what up, Ella? Uh, yeah. and, and the whole gang. And it's been so great to have a team and have fun with it because it, it does drive music now. We all know. And so it's been great to kind of go on the other side, not get stressed about it, but really have fun with it. And and I love interacting with with the fans, not only just to say thank you or, or whatever else, but but it's been so cool with Stupid in Love. Like some of the dances were fans in their room that they choreographed and now like these incredible superstars are doing dances they made up in the rooms. Happen, are you are you now taking inspiration for shows and, and tour dates and things like that from fans who you've connected with? Oh my god, with? yeah. I, I I had an incredible guy, Michael Lee. He's a he's an incredible choreographer and, and dancer. He choreographed like an official dance we were already working on. But then uh, there's this woman <laughs> named Stream Blood Orange. Yeah. She's 15. <laughs> She just like made this dance in her room, and now I'll probably do it with Yunjin Jin in Korea. You never know. It's like how cool that like yes. you know I was that kid in my room. Yeah. So I love that I get to to shine these great young talents. And I got another girl named Cam. She did a dance. She's coming to my New York show. So We're gonna do dope. it in person. And man, that gives me some of the most joy to like connect with fans in that way because they are the reason that a song yes. gets to grow. So I yeah. love getting to showcase their talent. Oh my gosh, That man. is so cool. <laughs> that is Knowing so that other people are just like Yo. creating art based off what you're doing here so too. Cool. And, and dude, uh, and, uh, well, not only could you, but also let's stay on this topic of social mm-hmm. media because you not only have been doing that for your, your shows and all that, but you've been connected with some of your your friends from back in the day. Shout out to oh, Kendall. Shout oh, out Kendall, to you know yeah. Say, yeah, Shout out to our big time Rush brother. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, he's, you, so, like, he's the best. He comes into my house all the time. Well, I think we just have been having so much fun with our little side bits. And we play, yeah. you know, we, we toured uh, this summer with Big Time yeah. Rush, which is amazing. And I think I'm also in a time where like, for a long time I sort of avoided like my times on Nickelodeon. Yeah. Cause I think anybody who's kind of been in that space wants to separate themselves at a certain mm-hmm. point. Understandable. But I'm in the sta- a place where I'm really just like, I was the guy from Rags is still the guy sitting here. And everything since is still me too so yes. it's like I'm really loving every era of whatever I've been through and That's I'm grateful growth. to the fans growth exactly growth, they're still a part of me so there's no reason to act like they didn't happen 100%. so Kendall's just my boy's about to have his first baby yeah. and he's just the best have you, have you guys given like have you had advice conversations because he's an open book too he's oh yeah definitely like you know looking forward to it very much like you were saying I mean have you had that conversation look dude oh yeah diapers are gonna explode you know what I mean oh yeah <laughs> lots lots of poopy diaper talks all that good stuff um, he literally just gave him a bunch of Edie stuff for yeah. his kid like like her first little rocking uh uh little you know infant what is That's it called so cool. that what like is bassinet, it what's the bassinet yeah the bassinet yeah. shoot thank you Dude, so much max Bone. i got you bro. daddy right there um <laughs> so anyway yeah yeah no uh it's been so cool and i just i love seeing friends get to go on the fatherhood journey especially yeah. in music because it's yeah. uh it there's nothing like it makes your life even better so love well you're sharing the fatherhood journey with us too we love seeing your little princess and how how is that like sharing her and being cautious of what to not overshare Great question. Thank you. I, I I I wrote a song for her in the hospital on the album. It's called Edie Celine, and I um you know wrote it with her in my arms. So for that one, I thought it would be special to share some like real life footage of us. Um, but I am really cautious because it's not her choice yet, and I want her. That was just like baby her. So now yeah. that she's getting a little more aware, I'm having it only be if she wants to be a part of it but yeah. just this might be a throw out of left field but Adam Sandler's one of my idols and I've always loved how he sort of had his family understand like what dad does it seems from the outside and maybe a little cameo in a movie and yeah. my wife's been in a million music videos yeah. like I want her to enjoy it but not feel pressure like if she wants to jump on stage with daddy only if it makes her feel like herself sure. but otherwise I want to support whatever she does and, and, and let it be her choice you know who on, else you know? has and we had the the honor and pleasure of having that conversation with sitting in that same very chair is, is Pink and the way that she uh, yeah, yeah. protects Great and one. she comforts her family and she has her daughter hop out just because it felt right not yeah. because you're you know you, you're you Pink's daughter you know what I mean no like, no no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a natural you know growth towards what it is that she may or may not want to do and for you to embrace that and to know that that's um that's special man thanks man no yeah meet it again dude. but she's my guy. No, I, fur I brothers know, over here guy, fur brothers. <laughs> come on now playing with the questions you always got the questions guys <laughs> we love them. well as she you. is getting older i feel like you're adapting to as being a dad in the music space yeah um you were a single and then you met your beautiful wifey and doing the the wifey husband thing and now you're a dad so yes how is that adapted to the road and to writing and trying to to spend quality time but also yourself as an artist gosh you're just hitting it hard baby uh it's one of the greatest challenges in the best way you know honestly 
they're my first priority now and we plan our life around that so even touring like i may may tour may not it, it has to make sense with with our life and they came on the full big time rush tour and mm -hmm. we all you know slept on a twin bed in the back of a tour bus and that was an experience you know my daughter loved it but, Whoa, but it's, it's uh, she, she was a little rock star but but it's definitely it can it, it connects us as a couple even more to make sure that we're respecting each other's boundaries and what you know we are comfortable doing together so i would say it just has brought us closer we've gotten more connected she almost never comes to radio veneers she yeah. is in the corner right I now know. which is awesome well, but uh yeah. but she's so supportive and she she i'm really grateful to her that mm. she fills in when i need her and i want to always be the same way for both of them yeah. just uh everything else comes second to them wow. we're talking about connecting and, and this is going to be a weird segue but it's going to make sense because you guys put out this recent video on social media um that that triggered me only because i had an irrational fear of boba tea oh wow yeah. i was like where's this going yeah. <laughs> I think it was Obsessed. a choking. I yeah. think you were scared of choking. I, I was scared of choking on it. Like, I was, had this thing where I thought I was going to slurp up a, bo a boba tea thing in my throat. And oh, die. my gosh. Irrational fear. It wow. sometimes. It, I mean, it, you, it you do get It's probably up. out there. But once I conquered that fear, it became something. I was like, I love boba tea, dude. I this love is like that you've conquered to it. To watch the two of you really, like, your minds absolutely explode tasting. Tell us a little bit about this collab that you have going on and the flavor explosion that was happening uh, in your brain. <laughs> Incredible. Um, big Boba Guys fan. When Emily was pregnant, we lived next to one. Uh, and we lived in a little studio apartment and sometimes she would crave Boba Guys. Yep. So I'd go and get one. And uh, and there was a, like, I remember there was a fan who worked there was like, hey, I was at your show the other day. Great job. Uh, here's your Boba. And I was like, I love Boba Guys. Yeah. So I just DM them one day. I was like, I wonder how we can make this happen. Awesome. I was on the phone with the CEO, CEO the next day we're on a Zoom. They were like, yeah, let's do something for the album. And I was like, hell yeah. Dream come true. Oh, man. Brought us to the headquarters. Emily got to be there with me to just like design her drink for Stupid in Love or just taste the drinks yeah. they designed. And it was a dream. I can't wait for everybody to try it. I've been dreaming of it since. I haven't tasted it since the first tasting. <laughs> so genuinely big fan and one of my favorite things for this album. <laughs> Random, but like makes sense. Random, but makes it. 100% sense. Right? right? Makes, dude, hell yeah. That's the thing. Go for your Follow my dreams, baby. Let's go. A simple there DM. That's Let's dope go. too. Let's go. Man. Simple DMs have changed my life, to yeah. be honest with Let's you. Let's talk Ke about that. Please, nope. yeah. Keshi from It's You, one of my favorite humans now by the way wow. slid into his dms we wrote it's you he was at my house the other day and my daughter fell in love with him uh she was <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> touching all of his tattoos touching his hair i've never seen her like really fall in love with anyone at three wow. and i was like dang i was wow. like dang I, I, well it was like on the one hand i love him and i was like wow so glad she has taste on the other end i was like oh this is gonna be out of my life she's gonna love like tattooed oh rock God. stars how do i feel about this so Anyway, simple DM started that whole best friendship. So shoot your shot. Love you, Keshi. Love Keshi's wife. I promise my daughter's not gonna steal your man. It's all good. I love that. That is so Dang, dope, sliding in bro. DMs, boba God. tea, and now the album. <laughs> album. Congratulations, yeah. Thank Alex. you. Less than ten days. Love in stereo. What was the process of writing this album like? Really, it's just been so fun because I think it took me a while, obviously, but yeah. but um, I really got to experiment a lot more with okay. with different with different sounds. And then, like I said, songs like "A Stupid in Love," I feel like they're just like the most core of who I am. Which yeah. for a long time I was, I guess, a little ashamed of is the way to say it. But now I'm not. I'm just like this is my who I am. This is my sound. And and if people love it, I hope they do. And if they don't, it's not their kind of thing, yeah. you know. And I think it's taken me till now to write those songs and be proud of them. I guess so. That's been a big part of this album. Just like so, being it was proud hard it. for you to be vulnerable as like a lover boy. Like you just feel like I th well, lover boy always been lover boy. I think. Yeah. But I think that I think it was probably coming from Nickelodeon and just yeah. really wanting to like get out of that box. And I think that Stupid in Love, for example, is a song that comes from that same kind of gooey core of mm -hmm. of like. I loved musical movie and being in rags and really? all that stuff. And it's and there's something about that texture and growing up in New York and being on Broadway. It's like something theatrical about it that is unapologetically itself. Yes. So I guess for a while it, it took me a bit to accept that that's something that I do naturally, I guess. I wanted to just make like the cooler, funkier stuff, which is still a part, still of, a part me, of you. And I love yeah. putting those songs out. Um, but that's been a real cool thing with this album to kind of have both on there and, and be Dude. proud of it. Dude. Man, what um, was the hardest song for you to write on the album? Ooh, great question. Come on, she's hitting the hard one. <laughs> um, hardest one to write. I would say, I would say it was interesting because Edie Celine 
was that it was both the it flowed the na- most natural obviously like literally yeah. she was in my arms was and I'm singing just, it was just there I'm just singing the song to her because Emily had just birthed the child and I was just like kind of hanging yeah. there with her in my arms <laughs> and she was resting as she needed to and I was just like I guess I'll write a song for yeah. you let's go let's, let's just go. you and me so that was so natural but then I think I, I brought it home and I then going from there to actually finish it and I brought some amazing writers to help me Sean Douglas and, and Johnny Simpson and finishing it that was the hardest because I was like how do I still bottle up this feeling of being in that hospital room yeah. so um, and it's her song forever like it doesn't matter you know I hope people connect to it but those are the kind of songs that are sometimes the hardest because they they're that's her first song I'll ever write for her and mm. when I've had oh, I'm gonna cry um, there's a line in it that's um, about you know one day this will just this will be your song like I may not be here and I'll be gone and this will be yours so um, that's really special and you want to make sure that those lines are from the heart so they that are. was that was it yeah, are from the heart. And, wow, and first crying for an oh interview my. today. Yeah. I didn't mean to cry. No, it's me too, man. It's, 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 it's beautiful. It's beautiful what you do. It's beautiful what you have done. And it's beautiful to see you continuing to grow into a stronger version of yourself who is willing to peel back those extra layers of onion that, you know, that are still there, but you're continuing to challenge yourself and you're continuing to put yourself out there and you're continuing to still connect by doing those. So be proud of yourself for for growing and in, in learning more about who Max is and being willing to share it with this dude. Who you and me are, baby. <laughs> who we are. <laughs> That's what it is, man. God, you man, always pull up with the good vibes. <laughs> You're always with the Holy smiles. Thanks, and just, just the awesome energy that you give. Thank you so, so much. Thank Congratulations. Thanks, Love guys. and Stereo. Oh, yeah, don't so listen in mono. <laughs> 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 no, it's not. Yes, one more time. Give that's it up the, that's the acoustic album, Love and Mono. <laughs> hey. Thanks, guys. Uh, what a pleasure. Thank you, you guys. Such- From the top of the Empire State Building. C100.